Welcome to Game Time Live. We had a shift change. Chris Miles here with my front court, Carlos Boozer, Dennis Scott. We got the shooter. We got the bruiser. What's up, fellas? Good, baby. We're good. Speaking of which, we're talking about a guy and his return that can do it both. He can bruise inside and also shoot that outside shot. Boogie Cousins, after almost exactly a year, the four-time All-Star and two-time All-NBA performer, will play his first game donning a Golden State Warriors jersey. According to Twitter, uh, Boogie is ready to get his groove back on the court. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but he's posted on Twitter that he's ready to dance and get out there. 3D. You had a behind-the-scenes look at Boogie the past couple of months. What do you think about where he's at and his ability to get back on the court? Honestly, guys, I'm really excited for Boogie, and it's more so booze about his reputation as being a young guy, not one to maybe work hard or share the basketball, all these different narratives about him. So I think going through this injury has really humbled him and really had him dig deep. We've all been there before. When you're sitting there, you're watching the game go before you, you say to yourself, Man, I really missed this. This is something I love to do. This is why I went to Kentucky and I was one and done. But this is also maybe, Booze, the last opportunity to prove to people I'm still, what, 28, 29 years old. I still got a lot of basketball to play. But mentally, am I caught up physically? More importantly, I'm playing on a franchise team that's about championships and going deep into the playoffs every year. So I'm actually happy for him and watching him go one-on-one -on -one full court, watch him in the swimming pool. We all know all this stuff is good to get you back on the floor and it's different. But I think mentally, being around KD, being around the Splash Brothers, understanding, being around true professionalism, uh, trying to win a championship every year, I think it's really starting to rub off on him. Yeah. Booz, how is that different? You heard 3D say it, the game is different than practice speed. What's it going to be like for him when he first gets out there? Yeah, it's so different. You can be in the pool working out. You can be on the treadmill. You can be eating salads. But when you first get out there and you see the crowd, you see your teammates, you see their adrenaline, your adrenaline starts pumping, you're like, oh, oh, it's real now. Mm -hmm. And so he'll be at a different level than he's been at in the last couple of weeks of practicing. And I'm excited. Just, just, just as a big man, he's one of the best big men that we got in this game. So I'm excited to see him back out on the floor. And for the Golden State Warriors, you saw the 51 points in the first quarter against the Denver Nuggets. They got Steph Curry back. They got Draymond Green back. They look like your back-to-back -back champions. And now you bring in an all-star caliber center that he's a guy that likes to score. How is that going to affect their chemistry, you think, at all? Not at all, because... If, if Kevin Durant, and I've been telling people this, dude, if Kevin Durant can come in as a former MVP and go, mm. okay, this is kind of Steph Curry's team. So if Steph has it going like the other night we saw at home, mm -hmm. here you go, Steph. Right. We saw the night before that when Clay had it going with the 43. That was a player's only game. Here you go, Clay. Right. So I think this team being so unselfish, I think Boogie's going to fit right in because it doesn't have to come in because we all keep saying the 25 and 12 Boogie. Right. Yeah. They don't need that. They just need Boogie to come play basketball, and the numbers will take care of themselves. Right. And a team like that, I mean, at the end of the day, this is a team where you sacrifice because the bigger picture is the championship. Yep. You know, Boogie here, he took the $5 million to win a championship. You know, it's, it's an environment where they hang banners on the wall. Yeah, guys get accolades. Guys make the all-star team. You know, KD's won the, the finals MVP. But he's going to sacrifice to win a championship. That's why Boogie can. And you mentioned that deal that he got where allegedly that was the only offer on a table for four-time All-Star, two-time All-NBA performer. Sometimes you're in a situation where you're humbled a bit, right? And when you sense your basketball mortality, do you think that's the case with Boogie? Yeah, I think the situation was, I mean, when I was looking at his free agency last year, I thought he was going to get a lot of offers from a lot of different teams. So when I heard that this was the only offer, that is a humbling environment. It's going to make you be like, okay, i got to take a step back. But the great thing about that, the, the environment that 3D talked about, he's in. He's playing with Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Draymond Green, playing for Steve Kerr, a championship caliber team. So you learn from those guys on how to be successful in this league and how to win in this league. That's something that Boogie's been looking forward to do. And once again, uh, Chris, at this point in his career, if this would have been any other injury, Maybe an ankle, mm. you know what I mean? But I think it's the Achilles that's really making people nervous because we talked about in our meetings. Not, it hadn't been a lot of guys that's come back from Achilles and have been an all-star. But once again, you don't have to be that guy this first year. If you can fit in and be that person to help them win again, now you're telling the rest of the NBA, I know how to play winning basketball. I've kind of changed the narrative on how people used to look at me. Okay, so the question there is where you look at his, his body. Big, Boogie's always been a bigger guy. He looks and good he right looks now. slim oh my goodness, and trim. He looks great. He's still 28 years old. That's, a, that's, that's young. 
That's 28 years you super young, in ba- as we say oh, in man. basketball years, yeah. because he was one and done. Uh, I was wrong. I thought he had made the playoffs. He hadn't made the playoffs. So he hadn't, like, well, you know, he hadn't played until June, May and June yet. So now it's about him continuing to take care of his body like he's shown us now throughout this injury and see how he can get back on the court and see what status he can get to. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how he's doing. You know, obviously, he looks like he's in great shape. He's been working out. We've all seen the one-on-one uh, battles he's been doing. with. And he looked good in New Orleans. Orleans. Yeah, yes. He looked very good in New Orleans. So I'm looking forward to seeing how he plays tonight. You know, Steve Kerr talked about him playing in spurts, so he won't get a lot of minutes tonight. But just him being back out there on the floor, and you guys know, 3D, you know, when, when you're coming back from an injury, it takes a couple of games. It takes mm-hmm. five, ten games to get your rhythm back, get your conditioning back, get used to the crowd, get used to the environment. Um, but just, uh, just having him out there is going to be a good sight. I'm, I'm a little concerned with the excitement of the game because we never fully extend in, in practice or in a swimming pool. So when you got a guy coming at you and it, with that shake and bake, now you got to get down a real defensive stance, that's when you can say, oh, I'm back. And then the next morning, how stiff are you? How sore are you? Because now you have taken your intensity to another level and all those things remain to be seen. When you look at this that's lineup, ridic- that is ridic- have you uh, ever seen a lineup ridic- with that ridic- many all-stars? Can you think of a team with the, the starting five, assuming Boogie's going to start? We have to wait and see with that when we hear from Steve I think, Kerr, I think Steve's already said he's going to start, yeah. So when you look at this yeah. lineup, have you ever seen a, a, a group with I mean, five all-stars I never in their prime? I never seen a team like that. I mean, I close with Detroit, uh, with the exception of Tayshaun Prince when they had Rip Chauncey and the yep. Wallace brothers, but yep. never all five. And yeah, four of those five have scored 50 points in the game. Yeah, I can't, I can't, yeah, I'm sitting here thinking. Trying to think Boston back of Magic Johnson, maybe? maybe? No, nah, because what, uh, Byron Scott probably right. wouldn't, have, wouldn't have been the. Correct, yeah. Yeah, so that's hard to think, yeah, from, and maybe Celtics, maybe. Mikael, Mc- Bird, Bird, backcourt. Dennis it, Johnson. Dennis Johnson, yeah, close. But, but Dennis Johnson but was all-star four, when he was in Seattle. Not four so, guys yeah. who scored 50 yeah. Yeah. So young. in their career. They're all 30 and under. And right? in their prime. Yeah, they're all 30 yeah. and under, right? Because Steph just turned 30, yeah, so. Woo, good gracious. When, when Steph's Ooh. the elder statement, statesman, Ooh. I mean, that's a, <laughs> yeah. that's a daunting yeah, task. Considering like nine months we don't know what we're going to see from Boogie, but if he's remotely close to that, as good as he looks working out. Just skill-wise, his skill set. When you look at what the Warriors have done with Bogey, with Zaza Pachulia, JaVale McGee, now you're looking at uh, Cousin, you're saying, wait a minute, talent-wise, you can put all those guys together and Boogie still has that much talent. The question is, Mentally, will Biggie, I mean, excuse me, Boogie buy into what they're trying to do with the team? That's the bigger question. Mm. So is, uh, is the Achilles tear the scariest injury for an athlete? Because we, let's look at some Today, careers that ended. Our yeah. very own great Isaiah Thomas yep. didn't play a game I was after. in that game. Yeah, I was in that game. So you I remember stuck, that I, moment? I, we, as soon as Isaiah started working here, we, we talked about it. He's like, man, you're not Orlando. <laughs> that's, the last, that's the last time I played basketball and I tore my Achilles. So there's been guys, we were talking about, I mean, like Wesley Matthews recently, mm-hmm. uh, Dominique Wilkins back in our day in the mm-hmm. 90s. So it, it's one of those injuries that you just never know versus the ACL now. The, we know there's a surgery that can get guys back to playing, you know, all-star type basketball. Mm-hmm. The Achilles is a little, little tricky. Yeah, so Dominique Wilkins, after he tore his Achilles, was the NBA comeback player of the year. So that's probably the most successful yeah. player that we've seen. So Boogie is really going to be an inter- interesting case to study going forward just because of how great he was and how young he is for the Golden State Warriors. And I think that's what well, year eight is coming in year eight, mm-hmm. 28 years old. So I think there's still some time for him to get back to that status versus, you know, Isaiah at the end of his career. Dominique, we've always said, was the human highlight reel, was a freak of nature, so he got back to there. So it's going to be interesting. Yeah. Can you continue to put in the work to get the confidence back in your legs, get out there and to play, you want, play the way you want to? Here's Boogie and Steve Kerr on his debut tonight. Honestly, I'm just happy to be back on the floor. Right? I'm not really going out with, you know. Outside of winning the basketball? Outside of winning the basketball game, like, that's probably my only goal tonight. You know, go in and play hard, you know, get my feet underneath me. And uh, you know, just really realize like this is a you know the last step of the process. So uh, well the rehab process. So uh, you know it's been a long journey. I'm in the last phase of it. And, um, like I said, I'm just extremely happy to be back on the floor. They laid out like the minutes number for you tonight, uh, pattern, substitution pattern kind of thing. Uh no not really. You know, they kind of they kinda of mentioned an idea but uh not really a set number. So. But uh, I think they'll play me in spurts. That's something they have mentioned. Uh, you know, 
going on the gas in the pool. What do you expect summer maybe? Whatever they get there. Yeah. I won't be out there playing 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> With the new system, how, how are you feeling now that you're back up to full speed or whatever in terms of comfortability and just getting out there and playing with five guys? Well, uh, I mean, me finding my rhythm individually is going to be hard enough. But, uh, you know, it's a great group of guys. Uh, you know, they've been supportive of me through this whole process. And, uh, I don't think it will change once we step on the floor. But, uh, I mean, they, we all understand the situation. And, um, I think they'll help, you know, guide me through the rest of this process. Do you feel like the coaches are going to let you have free reign, let you do everything that you can do immediately, that they'll be able to fit that in? No, I don't know about all of that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, I come in and play my part, you know, uh, do what I can to help the team win. Mark, some of your expectations have uh, fit into whatever pace the team is playing. Um, like I said, I don't really have any expectations besides, you know, just helping the team win. As far as the pace goes, uh, I got to get back used to the NBA pace in, the league in general, not just the team's pace. Uh, there's one thing that we you know to be scrimmaging against coaches or uh, the G League players, or whatever the case may be, but you know, actually being the game set, you know, that's just a whole other element. So, uh, be patient with me. <laughs> Can you get a feel with teammates in practice, or does that have to happen in a game to actually get a chemistry with guys? Um, It'll definitely take some time with, you know, in-game play. But, uh, like I said, it's, it's, it's one element to, you know, practice and scrimmage. But uh, to be in an actual game situation, that's just a whole other type of element. Well, we can't over uh, state what what this guy's coming back from. Um, and I know there's going to be instant judgment, analysis, criticism. We're either going to be, at the end of the night, unbeatable or in big trouble. You know, uh, but we know the drill. Uh, when a guy comes to a new team, it takes time uh, for him to get comfortable with his teammates. Um, and when a guy's coming off an injury, it takes time to really get your rhythm. So that's the biggest thing we're looking at, is just trying to uh, ease him back in, give him some confidence, and uh, find a comfort zone early on. And then over the coming weeks, uh, he'll find his rhythm. So with the job that he's done, to, the work he's done to get back, what do you hope his day is? Uh, I just want him to enjoy being back out on the floor more than anything. Um, you know, it's easy to get caught up in everything other than what really matters, which is a, a player in the prime of his career having a really big injury and now trying to come back from it. Um, so we want to, we want him to enjoy the process. Um, we want him to be able to play through the inevitable frustration that's going to come from being out for so long, and, um, having to face the speed of, of the NBA as opposed to the, uh, the scrimmage season that he just got through with our coaches and film crew. Uh, obviously, uh, going to be different and a lot different. So we just want him to enjoy it and uh, be patient. We'll be patient with him and we'll help him along. Scrimmages, scripted stints, short bursts, some of the terminology that Steve Kerr used there. And look, Boogie was playing, we said the numbers over and over again. 25 and closer to 13 and five assists. Can't leave that out. Those are MVP numbers last year. Booze, uh, in the prime of your career, when you was getting your double doubles and you have had an injury, would you have been willing to go play down in the D League back then? Oh, I don't know. I mean, it's, 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 Being honest, about, but thank you, thank probably you. Probably not, right? Yeah. In your prime, you getting double doubles. You making all star teams. You the career you had, yeah. and you'd have had an injury, mm -hmm. and they would have said, "Okay, we're still gonna pay you, but we need you to go down to the D League now, which is now the G League, to get reps because we don't practice right now." Yeah. Would you would you have done it so I, welcomely? Not I, I, probably I, not. I think most guys wouldn't. Right? To be honest, I don't think I would have either. I would have rather worked out with my guys. And we're seeing what Chandler Parsons went through a little yeah. bit with Memphis, right? Yeah, same thing. This is why I think this Boogie Cousins we're seeing now, being around Bob Myers, general manager, president, mm -hmm. then being around Steve Kerr, being around winners, I think we're going to see the right Boogie because Boogie went down to the G League and practiced multiple times. Right. And wait a minute, this is a guy we said something's wrong with him, right? Right, Chris? Yeah. So this is the part we, so people can change. Yeah. So what I've seen with the Naked Eye throughout the last couple of months with the one-on-one, -on -one, the Instagram, dunking on KD, yeah. all that fun stuff, 
I think this young man has grown up before our eyes, and this injury has really humbled him. He has an opportunity to win a championship and be around a first-class organization. Let's get back to the thing that you just said there. It's one sentence, but it's the overlaying issue with him, right? The discipline off the court, the fact that he's so talented, has not played in the postseason in his career. Is he willing to play defense? Is he willing to buy into what the team needs? Because the Warriors have all the scoring and the offense that they need. When you look at Boogie and you hear him now, Mm -hmm. what does he bring to the table that the Warriors don't have? Yeah, I mean, that that inside presence where he can rebound, he can defend, he gives you that presence inside where you can throw me the ball, I can get a bucket. Um, I think I think to add to 3D's point, he's around winners now. This is the first time in his career, with the exception of, you know, last year in New Orleans where he was hurt mm-hmm. in the second half of the year. Mm-hmm. He's around a whole winning environment where guys sacrifice to win. Like, they're not going to need him to put up 25, 13, and 5 to win a game. They can win a game without him. They've proven that already this season. They want that presence inside. They want to give him – you heard what Steve Kerr said. We want him to enjoy the process yeah. of playing basketball again. It'll be, it'll, be, it'll be fun to see whatever game that is, and he does have it going, mm-hmm. to watch all those guys for Sweetie keep going. And we, celebrate that, his victory. That's, yeah. that's what we got to understand. For as much as we love the Golden State Warriors, they're so well, still unselfish. Every night, 30, 36, 29, yeah. 35 assists a night because when they see the hot hand, unselfish basketball is a magnet for somebody when they're hot. And that night when Boogie gets hot, I can just see them force-feeding them to make sure you understand we're happy you're part of this team. Certainly when you say that, I think of the Clay Thompson 14 exactly. three-pointers in one Come game, on. breaking yeah. Steph Curry's yes. record. I think that's the thing that always you can point to and say, wow, that's an unselfish group. That night, last, what, two nights ago, uh, Steph goes for 48 or 46 with us. Clay goes for 43 recently. I think Durant had his 50 already this year. Yep. So you see what I mean? So each night there's been runs. Either one of those guys have been hot, and they say, okay, you the hot hand this week? We're going to feed that hot hand. And Clay doing the 43 on just four dribbles. There you go. Amazing. Right. Hey, Donovan.